You've probably had the term embodiment thrown around a lot lately, but what does it even mean? Don't worry, your confusion will end with this video. So you're gonna learn what embodiment is. You'll then learn why embodiment is more important than ever before. And then I'm gonna teach you my top three practices to really help you embrace embodiment into your life to be more joyful and alive. And this is gonna include a guided breath exercise. So make sure you have a notepad and pen for part three to this video. If you're new to my videos, please click just here, subscribe, and then click the bell so that you'll be notified when I release new content each week. So when you've done that, let's dive straight in. I'm Rishi Husseini, coach, speaker, and here to support you along your path to personal mastery. So on to part one of this video, what is embodiment? Embodiment means becoming whole, to have all of your parts online and to feel deeply and fully. And really embodiment is a state in which our full intelligence is experienced as a whole. And really you're in tune with your entire being, your mind and body are completely linked as one, as, a, as one ecosystem. And it's about who we are, how we live, how we connect and how our awareness shapes our world. And embodiment is at the core of personal mastery. And as you know, or may or may not know, we have our five stage path to personal mastery. And really synonymous with each stage, but mainly stage three and stage four. And we've done a video on that. And if you haven't seen it already, you can check the video out just here. Okay, so on to part two of this video. Why does embodiment matter more than ever? And for most of us today, we're completely disconnected from our body. We're just our heads upwards. We sit behind our eyes, drowning in that internal negative chatter that we all experience. And what that means is that we privilege our thoughts and mind, we put our thoughts and whatever we hear and think within our head, that is the only truth many of us live. And we're not curious about what else goes on within our body and what that tells us. We get taken out of our body from such an early age. An example of this is as a child, we get told, the clothes to wear so we're not too hot or too cold. We don't get to experience that. We get told when to eat. We don't necessarily say when we're hungry. And also we get told when to sleep. And so we become, become disconnected from our internal thermostat and the rest of our senses to tell us when we are in a certain state. And I get to see this so often where many adults, professional adults are disconnected from fundamental cues, their hunger cues, their bathroom cues, because they're constantly switched on. They're in this sympathetic state where they're just behind their eyes and they're, they're disconnected from the rest of their body. And this means that people are missing bigger, more important aspects to their experience of being, their intuition, their emotional side, and their introception. And so the idea of introception is that that is our interior perception. And before we have emotions, we have feelings, our gut, our heart multiple different feelings, senses going on within our body. And so if I'm feeling one way or the other at my core metabolic being, that's gonna influence my choices. So we literally feel first, and then we make up the emotions and stories to suit that interoceptive feeling. And so to give you a bit of an example of this, you can say, I feel angry. But what does that anger feel like within your body? What are the sensations that are present to make you know that you're angry? If you start to become more aware of your felt self, you begin to track your experience in the present moment. You know, you may get to notice what anger feels like. You'll start to tune into the senses. You'll, you'll pick up that your heart rate has increased. You'll pick up that your breathing pattern has changed. You'll pick up that you, a part of your body is giving off some form of sensation or feeling. You may be starting to clench your fists or your jaw. Your breathing pattern may change, meaning you may hold your breath or your, your breath may become short and shallow. Or let's look at sadness. Uh, many people report feeling heavy, uh, a tightening of their throat, their, maybe their arms will drop when they're feeling sad. So why is this important? And it's important because when we start to claim back that sensitivity to how our body feels during the day, we start to get a separation between the sensations in our body in the present moment and the emotions that we assign to it. So it's creating space for us to kind of see and get perspective on, on what's going on with our experience. 
and it's much easier to work with our sensations than it is our emotions. You know, we don't judge it. When we're feeling, when we're feeling things in our body, we can be curious. Whereas when we assign anger, oh, that's bad, we shouldn't be angry. Or when we feel guilt, we feel shame for feeling guilt again. Do you see what I mean? There's a, there's, a, there's a whole load of story that comes along with our emotions. Whereas when we just see it as our physical, we can start to tune into that and use various techniques to kind of disarm those sensations. And so those physical sensations, when you start to locate them, they can then begin to dissipate. And those signatures, the energetic signatures can start to leave the body. You can feel sensations running through your legs or running through your body. You can feel movement, contractions. The chiropractic world calls that unwinding. I experienced that myself for so long. I couldn't uh, relax when I was laying down. I, I, like, I would tune into my body and there'd be some form of contraction. But as I've got better at mastering that, my body begins to move, it begins to wave. Emotions can just suddenly come out. Whether you've had soft tissue work done before and you've left there, either you've begun crying during the session or that later that day you've had an emotional release. Maybe not identified to what that was about, but it's just a release from the body. And so when those physical sensations have the opportunity to be expressed and released, there's a sense of joy, a sense of lightness, a sense of clarity, because that sensation has been let go from the body. You become a master of yourself, and that's why I link it to personal mastery. Developing the skill to learn how to do this broadens up our horizons on so many levels, our physical level, our connection between mind and body, they're never separate anyway, we just learn to separate them. And it just opens us up into this way master of self. And what happens when you begin to live an embodied life where you begin to sync your mind and body and use it as one unit, in my life it shows up as speaking more of my authentic truth, even though there's a risk of criticism. And I can hold my values and principles even if friendships become challenged or even begin to leave. Because embodiment, allows you to grow, allows you to expand and begin to live your fullest expression because you're not bound by limiting beliefs that you don't know and also you're not bound by fears because you have these emotional charges that come out that you don't understand. You begin to understand them and not only that, you begin to let them go. And so part three to this video, my top three practices to help you begin to embrace embodiment and to open up your life in incredible ways. And so our unconscious mind, or commonly known as our shadow, influences our every moment in our life. If we don't look at it, we get held back and we continue to live old patterns, default patterns, and that might show up in a way of, you know, in multiple, across multiple relationships, not just intimate, across different friendships or professional, a similar issue may keep coming up for you. And so that was very common for me. And, and when that happens, and thankfully if that happened for me, I, I could see it. All of a sudden I could see it and think, wait a minute, that's, that's coming up there and it's coming up there and it's coming up there, which allowed me to look inwards. And so shadow work is so, so important. And that's stage three along our process of personal mastery. And shadow work becomes much easier. I wouldn't say it's easy, but uh, it becomes much more effective when you can begin to let all of this go. If we just see it from the mind, we're missing a whole, as I explained, we're missing our whole body, a whole tuning fork that's holding, basically our bodies are library for every emotional experience that we've been through in our life. If we don't learn how to release that, it informs us every single way it grips onto us. And so learning how to release that is an exceptionally powerful way to let our shadows go. And so these three practices are, are really an introduction to that. Um, I wouldn't then definitely not the three only ones you can do, and I'm gonna to touch on a few more that you can look towards. But these three basic ones have were exceptionally profound for me, and I still come back to them because they connect me to my body. For me, this shadow work is about listening. And embodiment is a crucial aspect to letting our shadows go. Okay, the first practice I'm going to link you to is body scanning. And it's a very, very simple practice where all that means is directing your awareness into your body. So starting your feet, through your legs, coming through your pelvis, through your back, all the way up through your upper body, head and arms. Now I'm not going to guide you in one right now because I've already done a video on that and you can check that out just here. It's a 20 minute guided body scan exercise 
ideal for anyone who's never done this before and ideal for someone who's experienced in this. It's done with music, it's 20 minute practice that can be done easily at the beginning of a day, at the end of your day, or ideally you do that and both. And it's helping you develop the awareness of tuning in to the sensations within your body. It's not asking you to come up with answers, it's just asking you to sharpen your awareness within your body. So give that a go. You know, like I said, beginning of your day, end of your day, or even after this video. The second practice I'm gonna introduce you to is simply practicing stillness. Now that might sound very, very obvious, it might sound very simplistic, but when you try it, if you haven't tried it, it's actually a very tough skill to learn. Certainly in my experience, I've found that. Practicing stillness to me, and I'll tell you how I do it, I lay, particularly the evenings, I like to do this in the evenings after a busy day. No TVs on, no sound, maybe a touch of music, up to you, whatever music you put on. Maybe some incense. But my legs, I put my legs up onto the couch, I lay on the ground, I close my eyes, and I try and soften my body. So I soften contractions. Now, you know, contraction could be hard contractions like when you're lifting weights or doing some exercise. But I want, what I mean by this is the subtle contractions that are held for me through my hips, through my abdomen. And learning to tune into that and to let them go. How that manifests in my day is, you know, if something comes up that triggers me, not necessarily emotionally, but, um, you know, if something comes up and annoys me. I've trained myself now to tune into my body. Okay, when I'm feeling annoyed, I'm not thinking about why I'm annoyed. I'm thinking, what does that feel like within me? And so there's a contraction there somewhere. And often for me, it's very much around here. My third, my third energy center, my second energy center, or my first energy center. And within energy centers, um, I've done a video on that as well that you can check out just here. Our, our lowest three are around our safety our security within the world, our material world, our physical world. So going back to that, that example, when I feel um, annoyed or angry or even worried, there's some contraction going on through my, my lower centers. And so when I'm lying there in the evening and I'm relaxed, I'm softening, I'm working, practicing this skill to soften, sometimes that's pretty hard. You know, that's, and it might sound funny if you've never done that before, but when you start to practice, you'll start to see sometimes it's easier to, to let go than others. And it's that process of letting go. You may have heard people say, you've just got to let go, you know, just let go to this, let go to that. But that's the skill I'm talking about. And so laying there and giving yourself time to feel this and to practice this is a profound exercise. And how that links back into life is that when I do feel annoyed, when I am learning how to practice the letting go and I develop it, I can let that feeling of irritation disappear. The situation hasn't changed. My relationship to it has. I've, I've been able to let that go. And so that's why I direct you to the second practice, which is practicing stillness. You can, you can progress this on. You know, one area where I progress this is in cold water. Now, most mornings I go into the sea. The sea is very luckily at the end of my road. And I'll lay there in the sea, letting go. My body is contracted or trying to contract in the cold. And I practice letting that contraction soften. And to just give you kind of a, a bit of a, a beginning point and a, maybe a middle point to this practice of, of softening, of practicing stillness. Another way it's described is a death practice. You know, practicing the art of dying to the moment. And so I, I highly recommend giving that stillness exercise a go. So that's practice two. Okay, the third practice, and this is the practical, this is the breath exercise that I spoke about at the beginning. So if you haven't already, pause the video now, uh, get yourself a notepad, get yourself a pen, and then come back when you've got that and get into a comfortable position. So see you in a minute. Okay, so if you've got your notepad and pen, just have it by your side, you don't need it right now, and I'll explain what we're gonna do. And so this is broken down into three parts. The first part, we're gonna look at the primary emotions. So primary emotions are love, joy, sadness, anger, fear, five. 
I don't mean the stories around that, I mean the emotions that you feel. That's the primary emotions. And this is the first exercise that we're gonna do. And I'm gonna lead you into it. And then I'm gonna ask you to just close your eyes and to focus in on the, the really the main primary emotion that you're feeling right now in this moment. At different parts of the day that might change, different days that's gonna change. But when you sit down to practice this, I'm gonna fo focus on you know, the main primary emotion that you feel. So I'm going to ask you to get comfortable, whether that's seated, where you are right now, whether you want to lay down, just maintain it's the same position through each stage. And so I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. And before we start, I'm going to ask you just to bring your awareness into your breath. Nasal breathing if possible. been I'm go for about a minute on this one okay we'll start now so I want you to bring your awareness into those five primary emotions and which one is showing up most for you right now and when you notice your mind wander you're just bringing your mind back. Focusing on that primary emotion. Without judgment. And without the stories. Keeping your breath. Keeping that emotion in mind. Gently bring yourself back. Keeping in mind, maybe there's a bit of frustration and not being able to sense the primary emotion, then I would put that in the anger box. And then don't overthink it, just write down that emotion that you feel in your notepad. So anger, fear, joy, love or sadness. Don't worry about the stories and let those go. Just what are you feeling in your core being? Okay, well let's move on when you've done that, when you've written that out. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to go for secondary emotions. So there's a bit more depth to that. So anger could be, the secondary emotions to anger could be judgment. Um, it could be kind of some more, it could be shame. Actually, that could be fear, you know. The secondary emotions like fear, uh, sorry, shame, resentment, excited. Uh, more depth to them. There's a, there's a list below of more, of more of a comprehensive list of secondary emotions for you to tune into. But again, you're just, you have the primary emotion that you wrote down. Now you're going to expand out into the secondary emotions. What else comes up for you? Not the reason why. What else do you feel? Do you feel resentment? Do you feel judgment? Do you feel excited about something? We're going to ask you to tune into that. So again, for the same amount of time, roughly, we're going to go. And so I'm going to again start now just by bringing your eyes, inviting you to close your eyes. Bringing your breath, the nasal breath, through your nose. 
and bringing your awareness into your secondary emotions. Giving yourself space, giving yourself time to sense these secondary emotions. There's no rush. Kindly bringing your mind back to those secondary emotions when you've noticed yourself wonder. Keeping your breath, keeping your focus on the secondary emotions. Again, just keeping bringing your mind back. And just gently bring yourself back to now. Gently open your eyes. And just write down some emotions that came up for you, some secondary emotions. I haven't got to match your first one, it's just whatever, whatever came up for you. Write one or two of them down. And again, you can check the list below to give you a bit more context. So we've covered primary emotions, the five key primary ones. We've covered secondary emotions now. So we've looked at our emotional landscape, albeit very briefly. And you can do this for longer, these exercises for longer, maybe three minutes, maybe five minutes. That's, you know, in a workshop, that's how long I would assign to these. And now we're gonna do stage three. And stage three is about physical sensations. So we're letting go of the emotionals, the emotions. So we're not looking at primary or secondary emotions, we're looking at sensations within our physical body. And so again, I'll ask you to invite you to close your eyes and drop your awareness into your body. What are you feeling? Where does it feel? Where do you feel those sensations? How does it feel? Is it a contraction? Is it a lightness? Is it a heaviness? Is it a gripping? Is it a tingling? Or is it something else for you right now? Keeping your awareness on your physical sensations within your body. Noticing where it is, how it feels. And I'm going to invite you to just gently come back. And again, just write down what came up for you. Or write down the sensations that you felt. For me, very often it's a grip, gripping. It's, a, it's very subtle, but it's a gripping sensation in my body. It's very often through my abdomen or my right hip or even my right side. No, I'm not telling you what to write. Like you've just experienced what you've experienced. It's not for anyone else. And just write that down. And 
maybe ask yourself what what surprises you about that does anything surprise you about that or what's familiar what when you've actually you know you've given yourself a bit of time to think about this what is what do you actually you know is always there but you don't really give it much attention and for me with sensations I will give, keep my awareness there and I'll focus my breath. And so we're going to do last bit, fourth little bit to this, we're going to do just a very brief breath exercise. I'm going to guide it for you. And again, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. Breathing through your nose. And beginning to make your breath deeper than normal and slower than normal. That's the only cue I'm going to give you. And I invite you to use the full range that you've got available to you in both your inhale and your exhale. Maybe pausing briefly at the end of your inhale. Softening as you exhale. So we'll do a brief guided breath count and I'm going to guide it for you. And do five seconds in, seven second exhale. And come back to a normal breath whenever you want. We'll just do a few rounds. Okay, all through the nose. First, inhale. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keeping your eyes closed. Keeping your breath deeper than normal and slower than normal. Now I want you to tune in to how you're feeling right now in this moment. What emotion do you feel? And how does your body feel? What's changed for you? Tuning in. And just sensing what's true for you right now. And then just when you're ready, gently open your eyes. And just write down how you feel after that short breath exercise and maybe the emotion maybe the sensations so that's a very brief breathing exercise that you can do an awareness and breathing exercise asking you to kind of really come into your body this is something you can practice daily multiple times a day maybe 
and just see how that, you know, see how that changes how you feel. And so on our journey towards embodiment, we become aware of what's going on within our body and, and what's, what else is going on, what else we can tune into and use as guidance in the way we make decisions, in the way we experience our world. So you can take these practices even further, you know, embodiment, the way you move, dancing, any kind of movement. I don't mean movement for exercise, even though that could be one way. I mean, how you express your body, where are you tight, where are your limitations? You know, intimacy. Can you be intimate with your partner? Literally just be together, like looking at each other, looking eye contact, or just body on body. It could be through music, it could be through singing, it could be through chanting. You know, you can really take this as wherever you want to, wherever, wherever you want. And I invite that to you, you know, to do that and to see what you find and to be curious. And to, if you haven't already, begin this journey of embodiment because when you are connected to your body, the world, for me anyway, the world opens up. You begin to open up your world and you begin to let go and understand your shadows and let go of them. And so that's the invitation for you today. So I hope this has been useful to you. Not, it's not a, a journey towards, you must do this, it's, just, it's an exploration. And to be an explorer of your own body and your own sensations. And so if you haven't already, please subscribe again to this channel. Um, and also if you are new to this and you're wanting to improve your self-care, we have a free guide for you to download. Click the link below and it's our four steps to four simple steps to self-care and really it helps you video tutorials on how to use movement to connect to your body so video tutorials yoga based movement mobility movement it focuses on mindset so how to shift into a success mindset and three nutritional tips to help you kind of improve your nutrition for better health and it's going to help you have the best night's sleep you've had in ages. And there's one more breath exercise for you to practice to kind of help embody this type of experience. So again, that's free for you to download. Click the link below and follow the instructions. So thank you so much again for joining in this episode. Please comment, leave a review. Let me know what you think. How was that breathing exercise useful to you? Did it help you? Would you like more of that? Or is it something that you want to see different? I'm looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on a new episode.